This is the Lexus GX or the grand crossover from Lexus. Now this is a model name that we don't know of. That is because it wasn't introduced to us because the previous generation model was around for 14 years. But apparently Lexus India was waiting for this one, the all new GX to arrive into the global market for it to be introduced in India. We are here in Japan to drive this car primarily on an off-road circuit because off-roading is now a very, very, very big important factor for this particular vehicle. The Lexus GX looks imposing with its big size and luxurious appointments, but you will be astonished at what it can do on and off the road. It is currently available with a 3.5-litre V6, but a hybrid is expected to be added to the lineup soon. The version that we are driving is the one with the 3.5-litre V6, and it comes with a host of new off-road features that are essentially designed to make driving on these kind of conditions an absolutely easy affair. That's something that we are going to put to the test now. We have seen plenty of specially designed off-road courses to show off the capabilities of off-road vehicles like these. But this course was made a bit extreme to show that the GX is far more capable than your average four-wheel drive SUV. So what I have in front of me is a very steep articulation course. And let me tell you, much steeper than the kind of articulation courses that we usually drive back home in India. These gradients on either side quickly show off how flexible the new chassis is and how well the suspension works. The GX uses a traditional rigid rear suspension, but the wheel articulation, which is now extended by 110 millimeters over the older GX, provides excellent traction and capability to tackle such a high degree of undulation. So on the screen, it will tell me which wheels have traction, which wheels are being braked. The new GX features Lexus's EKDSS or Electronic Kinetic Damping Suspension System which uses electronically controlled stabilizer bars on the front and the rear suspension. Depending on off-road or tarmac driving conditions, the system can unlock or lock these stabilizer bars respectively to either allow extreme wheel articulation on uneven surfaces or keep the vehicle flat, comfortable and sporty on flat or winding roads. With the help of the system, the wheels are able to move more freely and extend further into a pothole or an undulation for better traction. This also reduces the vertical movement of the cabin and the passengers remain more at ease. It just feels effortless. So there is a new mode select or a new terrain select system. So all you need to do is just put it in auto and the car literally does everything. The mode selector is divided into two functions, drive mode and multi-terrain select or MTS. Simply rotating the knob with the drive mode switch engaged will cycle between the road modes, eco, comfort, sport, sport plus, etc. which basically alter the engine and the gearbox responses, suspension behavior and steering feel. Press the MTS switch and the same rotary knob will allow you to cycle between the off-road modes and optimize the off-road hardware for sand, snow, rocks, etc. Depending on the terrain and the incline, you can use these off-road modes with low as well as high range four-wheel drive. Leave it in auto and it will do its own thing pretty intelligently, just like the new Defender but with a lot more grace despite the big size. You can see it from the outside, the car is huge, it is big, it is a Lexus GX at the end of the day but here behind the wheel it just feels effortless and small, compact, and that's the beauty of it. So yes, 3.5 liter V6, it sounds huge, it is big, it's a big, powerful motor. But the way the throttle has been designed, you can maintain a light throttle. There's no overwhelming power anywhere. And that's a good thing, because when you're driving off the road, you want to be measured with the throttle, right? And it's so easy to articulate that throttle is just amazing. Of course, the Terrain Select system plays a very important role in this regard too, but it's astonishing how its 350 PS or 650 Newton meters of output can feel so measured and precise. 
And when you want to unleash it all, the sport mode will allow you to do just that on the tarmac. There's also a new 10-speed gearbox to help that cause. The all-wheel drive system will distribute torque to ensure optimum grip for acceleration and handling. And the new suspension with its revised geometry promises a sportier and flatter ride than before. The other new bit is the electronic power steering. Again, big vehicle. But here I'm driving through some really narrow trails and it just feels like the vehicle has shrunk in size. There is no kickback from the steering. It can be nicely controlled because it's an EPS. So all that massive kickback that you get, you don't get that here. And then because this is a Lexus, the seats are also superbly comfortable. So you are not really going around, getting thrown around in those seats. It's nice soft cushioning. So all of that, just make sure that even your experience off the road is a luxurious one. Though there is no kickback at the steering wheel, it lets enough feedback filter in for you to know of any obstacles at the front wheels. Couple this with the aforementioned suspension system and you get a rather comfortable off-roading experience. Where you're able to traverse the tricky undulated terrain but without the extreme side-to-side -side movement, head nods or jerks and kickbacks at the wheel. Some may think of this to be undramatic, but most will appreciate the luxury caution that is attached to it. Speaking of luxury, the GX has a spacious cabin for four and the seats are well cushioned and large in size to comfortably ferry its passengers. Massage functions are also available for all the four passengers. So the space is brilliant. Of course, it's a Lexus. What do you expect? That's the kind of knee room that I get. Superb headroom. Now, the sunroof doesn't extend all the way back, but there is a very nice, airy, roomy feel to this, despite the dark upholstery, because the windows are quite big. So, overall, it's a nice place to be in. You also get these window blinds when you want your own privacy. So, the overall seating is really good. Three adults back here shouldn't be a problem because it's really wide. You also get the center armrest with two cup holders. And the overall cushioning, though it looks very flat in the imagery, I think the overall comfort is really good. So long distances, road tripping with this vehicle, not going to be a problem at all. All the seats are upholstered in vegan leather if you so wish. The front seats get subtle olive green inserts and have a softer cushioning for better support on those off-road drives. Compared to its Toyota sibling, the GX also features more sound deadening material to make the cabin more silent. You will hardly hear the engine or the dirt and the stones that are hitting the wheel wells. The dashboard is dominated by a massive 14 inch screen, but there are enough switches to maintain the old school feel and the ease of use. The instrumentation is all digital too and extremely detailed while being easy to read. The dashboard has a flat profile to go with the off road intent, and the visibility all round is superb. You even see the two contours of the bonnet, which further aids in getting a good judgment of the car both on and off the road. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is engage the DAC crawl mode and using the mode select switch, I can choose at what speeds I want the vehicle to crawl. It can do anywhere between one kilometer an hour to five kilometers an hour. And that is what I'm going to use now. And the other bit that I'm going to mate this with or other aid that I'm going to use is the multi view system that you have. So it's not only like a typical 360 degree camera system, but it also has the transparent bonnet kind of a mode. It essentially tells you what's underneath, what is happening at the front axle, what obstructions are there at the front axle. You can see all of that on the screen. So especially when you are going to climb on some rocky terrain like this, where you may not have enough visibility, you may not have a spotter with you, this system is going to help you out. And I'm going to use the DAC crawl mode. So after that, my legs are off completely. No brakes, no accelerator. I'm only going to use my hands to control the steering and the vehicle is going to do the rest. I've put it on 1 kmph crawl, which means it is nicely going to crawl on top of these rocks. Believe me, when you look at it in reality, I wouldn't want to attempt this on my own, but here the, the vehicle is just making easy fodder of all these rocks. It is just chomping on them at one kilometer an hour. And this system just tells me exactly where my wheels are, where the obstructions are. And all I have to do is just control the steering. 
I kid you not, my legs are off. They are not on any of the pedals. Crawl control will distribute torque, break the necessary wheels, and even keep altering the hydraulic pressure of the brakes to ensure that the wheels with traction will help the vehicle gracefully crawl over slippery terrain like these rocks or even slush and wet pebbles or foliage. And this works both ways, uphill as well as downhill. So the underpinnings of the car are of course based on the Toyota Land Cruiser 250. And when that car came out, you all know how I went crazy on social media. I was like, I want one of these. And now here, if you want something more luxurious than that, you have the Lexus option. The Lexus badge also means that while the Land Cruiser 250 looks old school with its round lighting elements, the Lexus looks more stylish and sophisticated, just like the LX. It wears the Lexus typical elements. The harpoon-shaped DRLs and the spindle grille dominate the front end. The latter follows a more subtle design theme though compared to the LX, but looks imposing nonetheless. The tailgate gets a seamless light bar and spaced Lexus lettering in place of the logo. While the front and the rear look luxury focused, the side profile gives off the GX's off-road intent with the angular wheel arches with chunky cladding, the prominent roof rails and the squared wing mirrors that feature a unique vertical turn blinker. Off for the over trail trim that you see here and you get chunkier bumpers and big off-road tyres that measure 33 inches in diameter but are neatly tucked away behind the flared wheel arches to ensure that the aerodynamic efficiency of this boxy SUV isn't hampered. Overtrail is also the new overlanding lifestyle concept that Lexus is betting big on and the new GX with its enhanced off-road capabilities fits quite well into it and creates a strong distinction from its more luxurious sibling, the LX. So the GX is placed under the LX in terms of the portfolio, in terms of the lining up and I hope Lexus India is able to bring the GX to India very soon because this is one serious car and one vehicle that I will certainly recommend if you don't want to stretch all the way to the LX. If launched, expect a price of between 2 to 2.4 crore rupees for the GX, which pits it head on against the Range Rover Sport, the G Wagon 400D, and its own sibling, the Land Cruiser 300, all of which is serious competition. But the GX means serious business, and facing them shouldn't be much of a challenge.